How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. I wanted to take a moment to show you how VCA faders work in Reaper as compared to Pro Tools. Now, a lot of people on the forums are complaining that I'm comparing this new feature too much to Pro Tools, and I understand that. The overall goal is to have Reaper add VCAs and make it so much better than it works in any other program, which is what they usually do. But I want to take a moment to make sure we get this part right, because there's certain things that are working in Pro Tools, and I don't want to leave those things out. So I have a session in front of me here. Let's take a look at it. This is Reaper, of course. We have some drums, kick, snare, toms, overheads, and room. We have some bass tracks, some guitar tracks, and some vocal tracks. There's also a VCA track set up for each group. I didn't bother naming them. We all just say VCA for now. And they're set up in the group matrix. Right here. Group one has all our drums as slaves with the VCA set as a master. Same thing for the bass, guitars, and vocals. Now I put a signal generator on each track just so we can see the level. And the reason for this is there's no other way of doing it right now. Again, this might change. Reaper 5 is still in beta, but right now, if I grab this VCA, which controls the drums, it's not gonna move these faders, but it will change the metering. So we'll hear the difference. So I bring this down, the output's gonna be lower. Or if we go up, it's gonna be louder. So change actually happens, but the thing is we're only gonna hear it. We're not really gonna see it. Now we can see it on these meters here, but the problem is these meters are static because we're using a test tone. If we had drums in these tracks, they would look more like this. So we wouldn't really see the difference quite as much, especially if the signal is pretty low. So it's a little harder to get visual feedback of what we're doing. Bring down the drums, the bass, the guitars, and the vocals. We'll hear the difference, but we're not gonna actually see a difference. Now I've been told by many on the forums that that's how VCAs work. They're not supposed to move the faders. And I understand all that. I'm not arguing how they're supposed to work or how they were originally created. My point is how does the user see it? Which is the best way for the user to use it? And to me, it's better to see these faders move. It's a quick visual to see what's going on, especially if this VCA, this one right here, was down over here. I want to bring the drums up and down. It's working, but the faders aren't moving. So now let's compare that to Pro Tools. We have a similar session here in Pro Tools. We have our drums, our bass, our guitars, and our vocals. And I set up a VCA for each group. But the difference is, I don't have any test tone going through these, because we don't need it. In order to see what's going on, we can just watch these faders. So let's grab the drum VCA. And notice, the drum faders move as well. Again, maybe that's not how a VCA is supposed to work, but the end result is the same. Bringing this down is gonna bring down the level of our drums, or our bass, or our guitars, or our vocals. So if we wanna write automation at a group level, a VCA is a great way to do it. Go into touch mode, and just start writing automation. And when we're done, we want this fader to go back to zero. We can highlight the track and choose Coalesce VCA Automation. What that's gonna do, it's gonna apply anything we did over here to the individual tracks. So let's do that. And if we coalesce it, this fader jumps back to zero because we're starting again. Any automation on this track is gone and it's all applied to here. So we bring this up, coalesce it, it brings this back to zero and all the automation on this track is moved to the individual tracks. Another great thing about this is if we want to delete it. Let's say we want to adjust the guitars just for one part of the song. We can create a VCA or I call it a temporary VCA. We can create it, adjust it just for part of the song, and then when we're done, just delete this track. And it asks us, do we want to coalesce it or not? In this case, we would. So if we coalesce it, it deletes the VCA, and all the stuff on the VCA, the automation or level, 
will get moved to here. So it becomes a temporary VCA. But right now, it doesn't work that way in Reaper. If I move this track down to here, grab the track, and remove it, it undoes everything. The track is gone, the faders stay where they were, and the level goes back up. So it basically deletes everything you did. There's no ability to coalesce it or move the data to the individual tracks. And again, there's no visual of what's going on when we move these things, other than the meters. So to me, these are some of the things that Pro Tools got right, and I'd like to see added into Reaper 5 with VCAs. Another thing to note is that without a VCA, let's delete this. These tracks are grouped right now, drums. So if I move it, they all move together, which is how you want it to be. But when you create a VCA, let's create one and assign it to that group, it no longer behaves that way. These tracks work individually now, which is kind of a better behavior because when you want to control it as a group, you go to your VCA and you can do it right there. So to me, this is a more useful way of using VCAs. But again, hopefully Reaper will make this so much better. I just don't want to ignore some of the things that Pro Tools got right. One of them being the ability to see the faders move when we adjust the VCA. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully the next time I see you guys, I'll be showing you the final VCAs in Reaper 5.0. Thanks.